seul. Too soon. Five minutes ahead. It's too soon. Hmm? Yes. Okay. Let's stop. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Please stand and turn back to the church, uh, to the back of the church. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have to share hope, the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations, we may be also inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor to Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him, and all the ages, to him with the glory and power, to every age and forever. Amen. By these holy and glorious wounds, 
May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Thanks be to God. I have to write my Thanks be to God. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exult all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ our King is risen, sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever.
Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with a seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and on every tree with seed in its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. You are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You set the earth on it foundations so that it shall never be shaken you cover it with the deep as with a garment the water stood above the mountains Lord send out your spirit and springs gush forth in the valleys they flow between the hills by the streams the birds of the air have their habitation they sing among the branches Lord send out your spirit abode you water the mountains the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work you cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use to bring food forth from the earth Lord send out your spirit the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Amen. 
let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant us, we pray, to set our minds against the enticement of sin that we may merit to attain eternal joys through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them it came between the army of egypt and the army of israel and so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night one did not come near the other all night then moses stretched out his hand over the sea the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the children of Israel for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Mo Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea the waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Sing to 
Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. 
Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of your Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever living God, sole hope, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was unclean. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed throughout, through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nation to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations, and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and make you follow my statute, and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. My soul thirsts for the face of God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival, like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Oh, 
send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain and to your dwelling. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul. to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the harp, O God my God, like a deer that longs for running streams my soul. Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both Testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal Mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy, so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of goodwill. For you alone, not a holy one, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord.
it will Amen Let us pray O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated. The Epistle, a reading from a letter of St. John Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For we have, been we have been united with him in a death like his. We will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia,
the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women who had accompanied Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were per perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then the women remembered Jesus' words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. These words seemed to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so we are gathered for the most uh, important celebration of the liturgical year which begins with the very significant rite of the light, the Lucernarium. We saw the beginning of the celebration as a very little light shining in the darkness. And progressively that light was spread from one people to another throughout the entire church. In this way we express the reality of Christ's resurrection. Jesus is not kept in the darkness of his tomb anymore. He is not prisoner of death any longer. He is alive forever. And he is the light that enlightens our lives, our human condition. Darkness, hate, and death do not have the last word but light, love, and life. And we have to remind that during these very difficult days that we are facing with the war in between Ukraine and Russia, that life will overcome, love 
will overcome if we are open to the presence of God. And Jesus' resurrection is the turning point of history. In order for that life, that light to be spread, each believer is important. We have received the faith from the apostles throughout the people who have transmitted it to us. It's amazing, you can imagine how many people believed before us since 2000 years. We don't know them, but they gave us the faith that they, they had. And we are also entrusted to spread this life, this spread this life, faith among the people after us. God's light is expressed tonight in another way. In fact, the Easter Vigil abundantly offers us God's word, which helps us to understand our faith more deeply. And just as we spend time with our family and friends, listening to them, remembering the main steps of our own history, we also spend time to listening to God's word, remembering what he is and what we are to him. The first reading taken from the book of Genesis is in fact the first page of the entire Bible. It tells us the story of the creation framed in a seven-day week, a structure still in use in our daily lives. We still have weeks of seven days. And you know that during the French Revolution, they wanted to change even that. They, they have weeks of 10 days. They wanted to have something special. And during the French Revolution, they skipped out the seven days of the week and introduced the days of 10, uh, the week of 10 days. But it, it doesn't last. Meditating on this marvelous image of the Genesis, we are invited to acknowledge the beauty of the world. And God saw that the light was good. And this refrain is repeated seven times. You know that in the Bible, seven is a very uh, important number. Don't forget that I am the seventh bishop of Timmons also. But it, it is not written in the Bible. The Greek word for good is kalos, which means also nice, beautiful. God's creation is good and nice. And according to our text, the world is not a chaos. It is organized from minerals to vegetation to animals and to human life. Do you see the gradation? A person is more important than a dog. Dog is more important than a flower. I don't know. We will save the, 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 your dog before the, the, the flowers and we will save the, the baby before the, the dog. At the summit of the creation, we find a human being created male and female in God's image and likeness. And like God, human being is granted intelligence and love. And he receives a responsibility over the, the other creatures. Subdue it and have dominion, said the Bible. Thus the creation is the first sign that God gives of his existence. It is the first book that we have to read, which reveals us him. The, this wonderful world witnesses the, the existence of God, uh, of a powerful intelligence. And we, we, we sing that in the Bible also. The heavens are telling the glory of the God, the God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. And uh, St. Paul said in the epistle to the Romans, since the creation of the world is eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, are being understood and seen through the things that he has made. And so I know a lot of people who go to their cottage and they, they want to go to the cottage, but it's not yet possible. We still have snow. I thought I am a man of faith and I hope that we will have a spring sometimes. I don't know when, but we can hope. And they, when they go to the cottage, they feel the presence of God. They, they look at the sunset, at the sunrise, and they say, it's impossible that there's no God who made so uh, beautiful things. And so it's a, a good way for us also to, to be in connection with God, looking at the marvels of the creation. And looking at the creation, many become more aware of their responsibilities, indeed by our action, we can destroy 
and we can respect the creation that God gave us. And so we have a responsibility on that. I know there are so many people looking for the, the ecology now, and it is a good thing, of course. The second reading taken from the book of Exodus tells us the history of the Hebrews freed from slavery in Egypt. And that passage reveals us another, uh, another important dimension of our God. He is not someone who has created us and forgotten us. God acts like parents. You gave life to your children, you become father or mother one day, and you never stop being father or mother. You are always father and mother. And so the same thing for God. He has created us, and he always take, takes care of us. God has this kind of relationship with his creation. And Jesus said in the gospel, my father is still working. God is always working for us. In fact, he freed his people from slavery in Egypt. He sent a lot of messengers, the prophets, to pursue his people's education. And he sent also his son. And this is for us the, the, the most important sign of God's existence, the existence of Jesus himself. We believe in him and we acknowledge his presence in our lives. We, are, we celebrated yesterday his death, but we know that he is risen, and that means that he is within us also. And also everybody of us has a third sign of the existence of God, your own existence. If you look at your life, you can look at your life and see how many signs you receive from God since you have been uh, in this world. It would be nice to have a book and to write what you receive from God since you are born. It's very important to acknowledge that also. If, you see, God frees us from a lot of things. Uh, I know people who have been addicted to, uh, to drugs or to, 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 to money or to, uh, to sex and all this st stuff, and they have been uh, freed by God himself. We have, all of us have our own history of salvation. And this is why we, we received this uh, uh, amazing message that God will make with us an everlasting covenant. We are united to him, we are related to him, and we are the member of his family. And the prophet Ezekiel explains, a new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. We have the spirit of Jesus, we have the spirit of God, and we have his light in our lives. We know how to, to, to deal in our daily life. And this is what we are invited tonight to renew, that we want to be always and more related to God, to live as his sons and daughters. Amen. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of our brothers and sisters who will be baptized. Not here tonight, there's nobody, but we will pray for all those who are baptized all over the world tonight. And so we begin asking the protection of all the saints to those who will be baptized tonight.
Please graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. O God, <clears throat> who by the invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism, O God, whose Spirit in the first moment of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power of to sanctify, O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue, O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized, O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth the water from his side along with his blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that the human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life and of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children to water and Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font. so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we will light the candles and you will renew the promises of your baptism. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? 
Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. And so I will go in to give you the Holy One. So let us present to the Lord our petition. To all members of the church, faithfully announce the good news for which Jesus lived, died, and rose. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our broken world be led to the peace and new life made possible by the death and resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That anyone in need to be, that anyone in need be raised to a share in the abundance with which God blesses us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be healed and for the storm of the pandemic to subside. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all of us gathered here grow in our Easter joy and amazement at all the good God does for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
O oh God, who now that our life, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. You can blow your candle out. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For what on us, O Lord, accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that was that was at begun in the Paschal Mysteries, may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times you acclaim you, O Lord, but in this night above all to love you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending name of your glory as they acclaim. It is he 
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For well, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, bless to us. Bring her to the child, together with the front and the quarter of the church, Lord Jesus. Remember also, brothers and sisters, the fallen and sins to their hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the life of the church. And bless the Lord God, we pray that we be blessed by you, Mary, Mother of God, bless the church of the world. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. For communion, please follow the directions of the ushers. We will be processing up the side aisles to return by the center aisle. Please be mindful of keeping some distance from one another as you process. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Eat this bread, the body of drink the body of this cup, come to me and never be hungry. The body of Christ. Eat this bread, the body of drink this cup, the body trust of in me and you. The body of Christ. Eat this bread, drink this cup. The body of Christ. Come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink the body of this cup. Trust the body in me of Christ. and you. Sisters ain't manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to Oh, 
The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. So you can spend a few seconds in silence to thank the Lord whom we receive through the sacrament of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the living Christ. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. And we know that he cannot lie. And so we know that he is within us. He wants to be always closer to us and so we tell him our faith and our desire to be always united to him. Let us pray. <clears throat> Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart to Christ our Lord. I want to thank you for your presence tonight and also to thank the, the singers and the musicians. Thank you for your great job. It was a, a, a huge celebration. Thank you for what you did. And also for your presence, all of you. The, the servants and all who prepare a lot of things during this uh, holy week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have down, drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit in those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Et benedicat vos omnipotens Deus Pater, 
et filius et spiritus sanctus. Deo gracias, alleluia, alleluia. A Easter, joyeuse Pâques, fel felices Pasquas, buona Pasqua a tutti quanti. Grazie. Good evening.